So now I want to talk about the incident that took place, right? Um, and I mean, when I heard this, I think when the whole country heard what happened, it shocked everyone to their core. So you murdered your son. Can you tell me about the days before that happened? Was there anything that he was doing that was different? Was he getting worse or what, what triggered that, right? What happened in the days leading up to it? I took him to the hospital and um, he then just he forgot his appointment or something because I gave him an injection. And then afterwards, then he just, when that, uh, the injection draw from his body, he became worse after that. What was the injection for? The injection was for him to, to calm down because I couldn't handle that anymore, you know. And he was he, just out of control. He was just out of control. Then the police came and uh, I don't even know where the police came from. And now I'm thinking I have to make food for tonight because tonight when Abe comes, then uh, he wants food. But the night breaks and Abe comes and he didn't want food. He wanted money, 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 which I don't have. And I throw the 20 rain through the window for him. I said, I don't have money. I didn't want my husband to hear. Otherwise, he, me and he will be on a fight and a fight again. You didn't want your husband to know that you were going to give him 20 rand? No, I didn't want, yes. I didn't want yeah. him to know that I throw the 20 rand to him because mm. I just want him to go away. Yeah. And um, so I gave him the 20 rand and I said, I don't have my money. Go away. He didn't want it. He wanted more money. He was kicking and throwing the bricks against the door and the window against the fridge and whatever it did. And uh, I said, A.B., now go away. Can you please go away? And he then, I just removed myself from the kitchen and I went to stand where you opened the door this morning. I went to stand in a lounge. And then uh, I said to myself, I have to go to work tomorrow. I need to go to sleep. But I went to bed and I couldn't fall asleep. I had to lay awake the whole night because it's now seven years that AB went on like that. And um, I went to bed and I was just laying in the bed. And uh, it's my morning breaks and I hear AB jump over the wall. And I got out of bed and I went to the back. I want to speak to AB now. When I got to the back, AB was just lying on the floor. And I said to him, Abby, now why are you lying on the floor? You can almost lie on the bed. Can I make you some tea? And he, mm, he said to me, mm. and I went inside and I make him some tea. And when I got there, uh, I bring the tea back. And in the same time, my husband come and he come greet us because he's going to work now. I went to him with the, to the front door. And as I approached to the, the gate, I locked the gate and I closed uh, the door. And I turned myself around and I saw there's a rope on the computer disk. I took the rope with me and I went to the back. I want to speak to Abby now. And uh, I came there and I just standing there. And uh, I want to speak to Abby now. But I just want to speak to him and see what he says to me. And uh, I then, it's like I put my courage together and I put the rope around his neck and I fasten it on the back. Uh, in the end of the bed and he wake up and he said to he was uh, swearing at me and he had a board that he was drawing on and he wanted to hit me with the board I said put the board down I just want to talk to you and please don't swear at me why don't you appreciate what I do for you I do for you why you keep on doing what you're doing and uh, I asked when are you going to listen he said mommy I'm going to listen and when he said, Mommy, I'm going to listen, I just pulled the rope tighter. And I pulled the rope tight and I fastened it on the bed and I was just standing there. And as I stand there, I said, um, I was looking at him and I thought, ah, maybe he's a funny guy. He likes to make jokes. Uh, he's just, I didn't even know what I was thinking, but he was thinking, I was thinking he was sleeping, you know. And uh, in the same time, I said, Father, forgive me for what I did. And it's like something from my head to my shoulders go out and I feel light. And um, I went inside and I went to, went to dress, the same dirty clothes that I had. And I'm saying to myself, I'm going to go to the police station 
tonight when I come. And when I got to the workplace, the, the people were waiting for us at the station. And uh, when we got to the house where we work, me and the lady that cleans the house, I, she said to me, it's, it's okay. And I don't know what, what she's meaning because she's busy making coffee for us. And she said, it's okay. I said, no, it's not okay. Um, so did you tell her what happened? No, I didn't at first. She just said to me, it's okay. She came out of the blue. and She, she could just see something was wrong. She just said, so I don't know. And then she come to me again and she said to me, oh, something, uh, everything is okay. I said to her, no, everything is not okay. Um, I, I killed my son. And that's when she shot there in the house. And she called Mr. Rogers, the people that we worked for. And um, he come and he asked me if I'm all right. I said, no, I'm not all right. Can he take me to the police station? I got there and they put me in handcuffs. And uh, they first didn't understand. And then I said to them, I came because I, I killed my son. Then they put the cuffs on me. I gave them my keys. And that's where they found AB.